Hit it. Welcome to the Test Talks Podcast, the place to go to geek out on software testing. And now your host, whose mission is to help you succeed with test automation, Joe Colantonio. Hey, it's Joe, and welcome to another episode of Test Talks. Today, we're going to be test talking with the CTO of Developer Express, Julian Bucknell, all about their test automation tool, Test Cafe. A few months ago, I wrote a blog post on the top test automation tools people bring up on Test Talks, and some comments I got was, why did I leave off Test Cafe? Well, the main reason was I've never had a guests talk about Test Cafe. So I thought it'd be great to get someone on the show to talk all about why Test Cafe might be the perfect test tool for your web testing needs. So in this episode, Julian's going to share a lot of information on what is Test Cafe, why it was created, and why it might be able to help you with your test automation efforts. Check it out. Test Talks is sponsored by the fantastic folks at Sauce Labs the cloud-based automated testing platform that eliminates the need to maintain your own Selenium grid and test infrastructure. Try it for free today. Visit testtalks.com and click on the Sign Up Now link under the Homepage Sponsor section. Hey, Julian. Welcome to Test Talks. Thank you, Joe, and um, welcome to everybody as well. I'm excited to be here and to talk about Test Cafe. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. I actually recently wrote a blog post on the top test tools that people on Test Talks have recommended. And when I posted that, I got a bunch of emails saying, hey, how about Test Cafe? How about Test Cafe? I'll be honest, I never really heard of Test Cafe. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll get someone from Test Cafe on Test Talks. So thank you for agreeing to it. Uh, Julie, before we get to Test Cafe, though, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself? Okay, I'm, my name is Julian Bucknell. I'm the uh, Chief Technology Officer at uh, Developer Express, and we're the company that uh, writes Test Cafe. Uh, it's not our main business, I, I quickly add. Uh, our main business is, in fact, writing uh, user interface components for basically the Microsoft stack plus the web stack. So if you've ever heard of .NET, we write uh, UI controls for all parts of .NET, including ASP.NET, for example, WPF, and so on. And uh, we also do uh, the same kind of things, widgets, if you like, for JavaScript and HTML5 and all those wonderful web applications that people are writing. So, you know, it's uh, Test Cafe is, is a bit of a, a weird one for us, if you like. Um, if you don't mind, I can describe the, the the history of why we actually wrote Test Cafe. Yeah, absolutely. Because I was just curious to know because you you create uh, you really your specialty is is doing .NET and technology like that. Was this born yeah. out of frustration with your developers thinking they needed a better solution for automating your, your UI well, components? Exactly. Uh, what happened was we started writing a whole bunch of user interface controls for the web. Initially, it was ASP.NET back in. You know, back in the days when I joined, uh, it was ASP.NET all over. So in this, in essence, server-side applications and uh, the amount of client-side stuff that was going on was fairly minimal, and um, nobody particularly worried about you know testing that part of it. And then we started getting into the HTML5 and JavaScript side of things, and there we started to run into issues with regard to testing. Um, the issues back then, we're, we're talking, I don't know, eight years ago or something like that when we started writing this stuff. And um, we started to run into issues whereby, you know, there's a multitude of browsers out there. Uh, we started initially writing mobile web uh, controls and testing those were horrendous. And so we we came to the conclusion that um, uh, having tried out Selenium, as does everybody, I'm sure, um, it just wasn't covering it for us. Um, and so we decided to try and write our own uh, testing tool for the web, for the controls that we were writing. So we'd be testing those controls in situ in either on their own 
uh, in some kind of um, uh, demo application, if you like, or um, application that just loads that particular control. Uh, or as you know, we have these, we hate calling them real world apps, um, but essentially we, we mimic some kind of real application that somebody would write and we do it with our controls. And to test those to make sure that they continue to work as we release new versions, we do two major versions a year and uh, every month we do a minor release to fix bugs and so on and so forth, meant that we really needed our own testing tool for the web. And uh, because we started off with mobile, we needed a testing tool that could work on iOS and Safari and Android. And those were hard to come by, <laughs> let's put it like that. So we wrote Test Cafe, um, decided it was good enough to sell as a product, and we sold it as a product. And, um, you know, the rest is history, as it were. So I do notice, uh, uh, maybe I'm confused, is it also... Is there two different versions as an open source version and a paid version? Well, that's what happened. <laughs> we, we started selling Test Cafe and realized that we had to get the word out about it somehow. <laughs> and our first version of Test Cafe um, worked okay for what we wanted it for, but didn't actually work very well for what uh, other people wanted it for. So we, we had a major discussion internally and decided that the best bet for us would be to release Test Cafe, at least the testing part of it, as an open source product and basically try and get everybody we knew to talk about the fact that we were releasing it as an open source product. And also, yeah, because we have to make a living, uh, to start writing essentially a, um, a dashboard type um, uh, add on to Test Cafe so that it's not necessarily just developers who will use it, but also testers. Um, we sell to enterprises, um, as do everybody else in our in our particular line of business. And with enterprises, it tends to be there's a development group and there's a testing group. So we decided to try and get the word out about Test Cafe, and it seems to have succeeded. You've heard about us. <laughs> and from that, show people that we are in earnest about this testing tool for testing web applications by making it open source and by maintaining it as open source, made, making sure that it itself, the APIs are open, that people can write, for example, plugins, and so on and so forth for Test Cafe. And on our side, write some kind of user interface to Test Cafe so that you don't have to be uh, super duper uh, JavaScript capable and not worried about the command line interface and all that kind of good stuff, which is um, the open source Test Cafe, essentially. Back in the day when I used tools like WinRunner or Quick Test Professional, some of the hardest controls to automate were third-party controls for WPF mm. and ESP and uh, Silverlight and all that, those types of technologies. Oh, Silverlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brutal. So, no, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, testing is, I mean, testing covers a whole bunch of things, as I'm sure you well know. It goes all the way from unit tests, where the developer is just basically testing a single function and does it actually provide the right answers when given a certain set of parameters, all the way through to, you know, functional testing, which is what Test Cafe is more about on the web, uh, through to things like usability testing. You know, does, does this thing light up, this button light up when I hover the mouse cursor over it? Or even usability testing in the sense of, you know, I'm partially blind. Can I get the narrator to tell me what's on the, uh, the screen and so on and so forth? So I with you there. Testing is 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 weird. <laughs> it uh, covers a lot of things. Absolutely. So if I was to walk into the Dev Express offices and looked in on a developer or a tester, would they actually be using Test Cafe? Is this the direction of the company, or is it just just another tool that you provide and your developers or testers can use it if it's helpful to them? Uh, the way we do it for for our website of things is the developers would actually write those tests and they would go into some kind of um, continuous um, uh, build cycle. Uh, that's how we use Test Cafe internally, which is why 
you know, we're so keen on the, the command line interface and all the rest of it. Our build process is, it's like 24 seven. Once it's finished a build, we start another build or it automatically starts. And part of the build process is running tests uh, to make sure that we haven't uh, inadvertently change something as we're developing a particular product or developing a particular user interface control. The other thing that happens is, you know, what we do is we sell to developers. Uh, we sell our user interface controls to people who are developing applications who need a great looking user interface. And no matter how good we're at it, there's going to be bugs. Uh, people are going to use these controls in ways that we haven't thought of. Uh, which is fine. And so what happens is, you know, we have a great support program and all the rest of it. We get, hopefully, uh, reproducible test cases uh, to show up a particular bug, and thereby we can fix that particular bug. We don't throw the test case away at that particular point. It actually becomes part of our business. And um, the same goes for Test Cafe. What we're hoping is, as people get to know Test Cafe more and more, um, our customers, shall we say, would actually develop test cases with Test Cafe that we could then run as part of our build process to make sure that bugs uh, which have appeared have been fixed and stay fixed, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's it's not a it's not a product where you know well, let's write a test suite and you know sell it and right. yeah move on kind of thing. No, 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 no. We use it internally. It's one of those things. We do that every now and again, but something that we do internally, um, because we write all our own um, internal software, uh, you know, sales software and customer facing software and all that kind of stuff. And if we find that there's something there that you know, our customers would like this, then we'll packetize it as a product and sell that as a product. But we don't you know, basically give up on it at that particular point internally. We keep on using it. And the same goes for, for Test Cafe. It's, it's one of those products where we needed it, we wrote it, we've uh, now open sourced it, and we still use it. It's, uh, it's part of our entire um, you know, continuous build process. So I'll be honest, uh, the business you're in sounds very stressful, especially for a tester, because <laughs> you never know. It's third-party control. You have probably no idea what half your users are going to end up doing with their your controls. So uh, do you have a process in place or any tips around uh, developing software that is not bulletproof, but that's able to adapt to situations that you may not even be able to anticipate? That is a very difficult question because – you know, I could pontificate for hours about you know you know being able to write well tested code right. and and all the rest of it. But the the issue is you know the stuff we write is like Lego bricks. You know we assume people know how to build a house with Lego, but sometimes they build something else with Lego and it falls apart or something like that. You know, stretching the metaphor a little bit, <laughs> but <laughs> and. It will always happen. Uh, this, this is just no way around it. But obviously, we uh, we know what our customers are writing. A lot of times, uh, we write a particular feature or a particular control or enhancement or whatever it happens to be because of feedback from customers. We rely on feedback from customers. So at that particular point, we have a set of customers today who want feature X. And if we write feature X, we can then send it to them as a beta, for example, and say, yeah, is this what you wanted? Is this? Did we get it right? Is it going to work for you? Does it, um, you know, connect to the right database and all that kind of stuff? And once we get feedback on the new feature, then we'll release the feature. And um, you know, at that particular point, it's then you know being tested internally as far as we understand how people want to use it. But it's it's difficult to say. We we write heavy-duty controls. So if you want a spreadsheet control in your application, we've got one. And at that point, it's like, well, Excel does this, but yours doesn't, <laughs> you know, things like that. But, you know, if you wanted a spreadsheet component and it fails somehow when talking to Oracle, um, then we want to know so we can fix that. We have our own Oracle server, so let's have a look, see what the issue was. Oh, yeah, we've got to do something, something, something. And, you know, write a test, show that's true, fix the bug, boom. There really is, having done this, we're 20 years old this year. 
Having done this for 20 years, there is no simple list of things to do to create user interface components or to create libraries that people would use uh, or to create, as we're talking about Test Cafe, um, a testing product that people will use. It's, um, it's difficult. It, you know, we use it one way, somebody else will use it another way. And so we have to, as a company, try and cover bases as and when we learn about them. I just want to clear up any confusion someone might have. So you are DevExpress, you create custom uh, third-party controls, but you also develop Test Cafe. And That's right. the two aren't tied together, meaning that you don't need to use your third-party controls in order to use Test Cafe, correct? No, 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 no. no Test Cafe is completely separate on its own. We developed Test Cafe to help us write better controls uh, for the web, uh, but you don't have to use our controls to use Test Cafe. No, not at all. Um, it's completely separate, and you know we'll we'll help you. Obviously, we'll help you use Test Cafe if you find a bug with with Test Cafe or for some kind of use case that we haven't thought about. Then fine, we'll we'll solve that particular bug or use case or however it may be. But certainly, no, you don't have to use our other products to use Test Cafe at all. It's uh, completely open source. There's no there's no tie in to uh, our other code in any sense. I guess the next question is, I actually asked, uh, I have a Slack channel for my uh, automation guild. I have conferences. And so I have people in, in a private Slack channel. And I, I told them I was interviewing you about Test Cafe. And someone yeah. just wanted to know, you know, my blog post is on 43 automation tools that can help help engineers. Why did you feel the need to create another tool? Like, How is this different from all the other tools that may be out there already? So the, the initial reason we wrote this was because we were creating user interface controls for mobile web apps. And we found that we were having great issues in testing those controls uh, for, for the mobile devices. Um, we started off with Selenium. Selenium, I mean, it's the de facto testing tool for the web, basically. But we were having issues with regard to browsers. I'm sure you and I, <laughs> we all use the latest browsers. Yeah. You know, my, I use Firefox myself, and uh, it updates every, what, every week or something? I don't know. <laughs> just, I always run the latest version. That's the end of that. But what happens in enterprises, for example, they basically get stuck on a particular version of, say, Internet Explorer. And... Because we sell to enterprises, we have to be able to support them. So if they're using an Internet Explorer 9 or whatever it happens to be, then we have to be able to say that our controls work in Internet Explorer 9. And if they don't, we have to fix it. So we have to have some way of doing, if you like, regression testing when we do a fix or when we do a new feature to say that it works on all these other browsers as well. It, we can't just say we just support the latest Chrome, the latest Firefox and Microsoft Edge. Thanks, everybody else, but we don't need you. Right. No, it doesn't work like that. Um, that's, if you like, another issue with regard to writing user interface controls is that, unfortunately, even in this day and age, companies don't keep up with the latest version of the OS or the latest version of the browser or whatever it happens to be. So we have to be able to, you know, run our tests, especially on the web, on a numerous set of browsers. And the great thing about Test Cafe is writing Test Cafe meant that we could maintain testing on those vintage browsers, shall we call them. And uh, one of the supporters of um, Test Cafe is, in fact, uh, what's it called? Browser, br browser, 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 browser mob. Yeah, browser stack. Yeah. That's it, yes. And um, source labs. You know, so we can basically go to them and say, we want to run this on IE9. We don't have to maintain a, a PC in the background or a virtual machine over there that, you know, has IE9 and that's the only thing it has on it. No, we can use, um, with Test Cafe, there's a plugin for browser share or for source labs. And um, that is incredibly important uh, for a company such as ourselves or for enterprises that we sell to and so on and so forth. It's, I just wish that, yeah, people use, say, the latest Chrome and that was it. 
but it doesn't work out like that in real life. It's uh, it's weird. To summarize, basically, we needed to support a whole bundle of browsers, different versions of browsers, and so on and so forth. And Selenium, bless its cotton socks, uh, just didn't cut the um, uh, the mustard on that particular uh, score. So, you know, if you like, we had to write our own uh, capable testing tool to be able to target whichever browser we pointed it at and, um, you know, be able to run those tests, you know, automatedly and, um, you know, not manually and, and so on and so forth. Cool. So did you add any other features that you found that may have been lacking in, in an API like Selenium? Like, uh, do you have a better waiting mechanism or anything like that that would help make the test more reliable when running against all these different browsers? I find it hard to to point out, you know, various technical aspects of Test Cafe because, in essence, I haven't been involved in that part of the development. In essence, you know, we're we're, we're trying to you know target a gazillion browsers, and we wanted it to be easy to install. It's a it's a Node.js uh, product at the moment, and so you know, npm install Test Cafe and you're away kind of thing. It's a cross-platform and cross-browser. It's JavaScript-based at the moment, and that's one of the things we want to do with our new Test Cafe Studio, this, if you like, a dashboard, which will enable people who don't really know JavaScript to actually write tests and run them and, and so on and so forth. So we use it ourselves for our complex client-side controls. We do have, for example, a spreadsheet for the web. Testing that <laughs> will require all of those wonderful things that you know your you know test will be worried about. You know, it's um, it's not a static page. Oh heavens, no! <laughs> it uses Ajax to get stuff and populate the um, you know the spreadsheet, for example. You know, so we have to be able to be able to track. Um, Ajax calls. Yeah, we do that. Um, we have to, you know, think of something complex. One of our controls has that complex feature, and we have to be able to test for it. So, because we write complicated, not complicated necessarily, but complex controls with lots of features and usability aspects, and so on and so forth, we have to be able to test for all of those, just for our own purposes, not necessarily our customers' purposes, just for our own purposes. Yeah, it's. It's it's hard <laughs> to say, you know, this particular technical feature, yeah, we support that. We have to. I mean, it's 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 just bizarre, really, the, the things we have to do to make sure Test Cafe works in those kind of environments and asynchronous type, you know, updates and, and so on and so forth. Yes, we have to do it because our controls require it. Yep. I guess another interesting thing about Test Cafe is, as we mentioned already, there's two versions. There's an open source, but there's also one, a paid solution, which seems more geared towards maybe, like you said, someone that may not necessarily be a JavaScript developer, but it's just getting started. So it has a nice recorder to it. That's right. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're currently developing. We did have um, a version, and you can still get that version, but um, it's it's lacking in certain respects. So what we're doing at the moment is we're essentially rewriting it. We're going to call it Test Cafe Studio, and it's going to be a way for, um, if you like, non-developers or testers to um, run tests that developers have created, to create their own tests and run them. Um, and it will take care of all the, oh, you're you know, clicking on this button or you're hovering over this or this has just been asynchronously updated from this database over there and you know, be able to basically convert that into uh, JavaScript and be able to run it over and over and over again. So Test Cafe Studio is something that we're currently writing. Um, uh, I get the impression from the team <laughs> that it's not going to be in our first major release of the year, but it'll be in our second major release of the year. And uh, we'll go from there. That will be a paid, not a version of Test Cafe, it'll be a paid update to Test Cafe. Test Cafe is now open source. The whole engine for Test Cafe is open source. So that just stays the same. If you need, for example, the ability for non developers to create tests and run the stuff, then Test Cafe Studio will be the 
uh, product to buy. Pricing, who knows? I don't know. Not yet. Cool. So one other thing you mentioned a few times is the dashboard. And this is something I see a lot of people lacking, have an insight into their test with uh, good dashboarding. So could you just tell us a bit more about that feature? Well, that's that's the Test Cafe Studio. So Test Cafe works at the moment through the command line. So when you run a set te- – sorry, start again. Test Cafe at the moment runs on the command line. So when you run a set of tests – a fixture, we call it, um, the output from those tests goes to the command line. You see it scrolling away, and um, you can go back and have a look and all that kind of stuff. But that's that's essentially what it does. So what the dashboard will do, what Test Cafe Studio will do, is to gather all that uh, output from Test Cafe and present it in some kind of dashboardy way so that you can see that, you know, a certain percentage of tests are passed, a certain percentage have failed. And if I want to drill down, I can click on that and then drill down to see which ones have failed and see, drill down a bit more and see where, why they failed and so on and so forth. As I say, it's still under development. Um, but again, this is one of those things. We write dashboards. It's uh, the control that we sell for the web. Right, right. Um, so, you know, Test Cafe Studio is going to be a a proper Dev Express product because it will be built with Dev Express uh, controls. So uh, I saw a um, an early version um, a couple of weeks back, and um, we're it's it's slowly getting there. Let's put it like that. At the moment, you can you know load a set of fixtures and run them, uh, run the tests, and uh, see the results and all that kind of stuff. So there's still a lot more visualization of running these tests and how they worked and, and so on and so forth still to come. It's a little hard to describe how it's going to be because, as I said, you know, it's not going to be in our first major release of this year, uh, which is in, well, a month's time. And uh, it's going to be uh, later on this year. Um, so um, with that, I just basically can say, let's see how it all comes out. So, uh, Julian, another thing sometimes people have issues with with uh, other tools is the documentation really isn't that strong. So is there anything with Test Cafe that you feel would help someone trying to get started with automation using your tool? Yes, we've we as with all our products, we concentrate a lot on the documentation. The documentation is also open sourced. It's also up on GitHub, and we um, you know love pull requests from our customers saying, you know, improve this, improve that, improve the other. Documentation is structured so that um, you have, if, if you like, a definition of the API for Test Cafe. Uh, <clears throat> but that's kind of, you know, once you're used to Test Cafe. And so we do have these introductory um, topics uh, tutorials, if you like, on how to use Test Cafe, how to set up a test, how to run a test, how to improve that test, how to you know grab hold of what's in this particular um, you know HTML element and so on and so on and so forth. So we do concentrate a lot on our documentation. The documentation is fully linked and all the rest of it. So it's. Part of what makes us Developer Express is we have to be able to describe to people how to use our products. And we are very proud of our documentation. Uh, It takes a lot of effort. Um, The nice thing about Test Cafe, as I said, is it's open source. So our documentation is also open source for for Test Cafe, for being able to create tests and fixtures and running them and um, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, absolutely. And have a look at it, issue pull requests saying, I don't understand this, we'll fix it. That's how it works in the open source world. (laughs) Okay, Julian, before we go, let us know the best way to find or contact you. The best way to... Find out about Developer Express is we're at devexpress.com. I am Julian Bucknell, and my email address is julianb at devexpress.com. I'm on Twitter at JM Bucknell. I'm always open to feedback from people who are interested in one of our products, uh, interested in feedback from our customers, obviously. Um, Certainly, (laughs) <laughs> the the one thing this is was a kind of a joke 
website that I created. If you're stuck, you can't remember my name, just think I Met Julian. If you go to imetjulian.com, you'll find out all about me and about DevExpress. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Julian, for your Test Cafe Automation Awesomeness. For links to everything of value we covered in this episode, head on over to testtalks.com forward slash 216. And while you're there, make sure to click on the sign up for a free trial link under the exclusive sponsor section to learn all about Sauce Lab's awesome products and services. So that's it for this episode of Test Talks. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed with creating automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Test Talks podcast. Head on over to www.testtalks.com for full show notes, amazing blog articles, and other automation awesomeness.